Casey, have you run for five touchdowns in a game before? Yes. High school? Yeah. yeah. I, mean, but I don't think so. I don't know. I don't think so. I mean, but to do it on a day where, I mean, they, they knew how much you were going to run with how rainy it was out there. I mean, do you like environments like this to get to play in a kind of quarter of rainy game and, and be the rock? Oh, the most definitely. I mean, this was definitely a playoff atmosphere. Um, I should know. We played here last year in, in a playoff environment, but it was definitely a playoff uh, atmosphere, and you love playing in those kind of environments. Was anything different in the week leading up? Did you feel like the big game was coming, or was it just hold on? Oh, same thing each week. Same same method. Go out there each and every single week, grind and practice to have it translate and have it come to life on the field on Sunday. Uh, he, he told me how proud he was. I mean, he said he spoke to Edrin as well. Um, and it just kind of makes you want to go out there each and every single week during practice to put the work in so that it comes to life on the field on Sunday and you're able to, to back him up and prove him right. This franchise has invested so much in you and so much belief. What does that mean? It, it means a lot. Uh, and that makes me want to go out there each and every single week to make sure I put my best foot forward in practice so that I can translate it on the field and, and really put my best foot forward on Sundays as well. John, you, you faced questions, I mean, this team has faced questions about not being able to beat teams that made the playoff last year and blowing fourth quarter leads. What did it mean to get off of this kind of a start and to beat this team that ended your season last year? It, it meant a lot. I mean, that's something that we're going to have to do. If we want to get to where we want to go at the end of the year, we're going to have to be able to, to put games away in the, in the fourth quarter. We're going to have to put points up, and we're going to have to play great defense. You mentioned the playoff atmosphere. What is it like from a player standpoint to be out there surrounded by opposing fans and to take them out of the game? It's, it's, it's nice. You come out, you're getting booed, and, you know, it's just you just feel it. And the only thing you think about is, it's just us 11 together on this field. That, that's all we got. Um, and you have a bunch of hostile people around you. Um, and then as the game goes on and people start leaving, um, you just feel a tighter bond between those 11 on the field knowing that you guys came in and held strong together. This is considered one of those few stadiums that really does have that home field advantage because the fans and, and the way that they come in. Did you sense that as, as uh, something you needed to do was kind of remove them, quiet things down for the offense. I'm sure that they weren't as loud as every time you got the ball back, they were probably a little quiet. Uh, I mean, you don't know if they're going to be quiet if we're up by a bunch or not. Most likely they will be. Um, but it's just about handling business every single drive, being able to put points on the board, create turnovers, capitalize on those turnovers, and play great defense so you can come out with the win. Which one was your favorite? <laughs> they all were my favorite. Anytime you get into the end zone, it, it's a good day. How about the second one? Can you describe the second one, the throwback, where you kind of pulled them with the misdirection? Oh, yeah. First off, you, you got to focus. Focus up on the catch, secure it. Um, then get your eyes downfield and, and make sure that you, you find a way to maximize the gain on that play. Who do you pattern your running style on? Yeah. yeah, growing up, uh, I used to love watching, and I still do watch his highlights, Arian Foster and Adrian Peterson. Um, Arian Foster, for his size, he was so smooth and then out his cuts, and then Adrian Peterson just had that raw speed and power combination that was rare. When did you know that uh, in the game you guys were having success running the ball, especially in between the tackles? Um, you kind of really don't know. you got to play the entire game. Uh, you can't really get relaxed at all. You can't relax until that clock hits zero. Um, so you're looking at the clock, you're looking at the points, and all you're thinking is, what are we doing right now? OK, it's first, second and five. Let's go get this first down. How does the body feel after 32 carries? Really have to find out tomorrow. I mean, you, adrenaline probably is still going right now. That's usually what happens after a big game like this. Do you understand kind of the gravity of what you're it definitely is, but it's a prove it. It's a prove it league, and you're only good as your last snap. So you can go out there next week and stink it up. So you got to make sure you stay focused. Hey Jonathan, you haven't had more than 20 carries in a game all season until last week. 21 last week, 32 this week. Do you think not having so much workload will help you down the stretch? Because it's clear they're going to feed you as much as as much as you can handle. That definitely contributes to it, um, as well as uh, your preparation off of the field as well, as far as recovery and prehab is what I like to call it. Um, a lot of people like to recover a bunch after the games, but a big key part of it is what you do prior to the games. You know, Are you taking the precautionary measures? Are you getting massages? Are you getting dry kneeling? Are you doing those things before the game? Have you heard a lot of Adrian over the years? Do you talk to him ever? 
I mean, not over the years, but now <laughs> that I'm here. <clears throat> but now, yes. You guys have chatted and texted. Yes. Do you, do you feel home? like you are the identity of the Colts offense? No, the Colts offense identity is all of us all together. Um, everything that you saw today was a culmination of the defense getting the ball back to us, creating turnovers, and then the offense being on one accord, being able to, to communicate no matter what front, what pressure they bring, being able to execute. Jonathan, can you tell me, Frank has all his pieces, you know, personnel like he does right now. What, what, kind of, um, you know, what kind of approach can he take in a game like this in terms of controlling it from a play calling standpoint? I think the, the sky is the limit, um, but and most importantly, it's going to fall back on us in order to make sure we do the preparation uh, the right way throughout the week. <laughs> because if you don't do that throughout the week, it won't come to life on the field on Sundays. He's, he's, not, he's not demonstrative. He's, he's, you know, he's not colorful necessarily. Why do you guys buy into to what he preaches so consistently? It works. I mean, and, and great players know that it takes work. You don't just go out there and wake up on Sundays and, and you flip a switch on. It's, that doesn't work, not in this league. If you, think, if you think that works in this league, then you won't last that long. It takes consistent work and consistency in order to, to play at a high level in this league. Okay, last one here. Do you just do that sequence when you kick a field goal right before halftime, they fumble the kickoff return, you're probably getting settled in on the sideline, you got to grab your helmet and get back out there. Can you take us through what that meant in terms of the, the significance of the game at that moment to go right back out there and get a bonus touchdown. Yeah, it's always huge. Um, like I mentioned earlier, when the defense creates turnovers, then it's on the offense in order to capitalize on those points. The defense gave us a gift, and now we have to go out there and finish it. Okay, thanks, guys. Thanks. Thank you.